Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier, where I help me help you go further in tech. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the credentialing program guide specifically for the CIS ITSM certification. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, if you haven't done so already, I highly suggest you create a now learning account. It's free, it costs you nothing to create the account. I have a video on it that I'll link above here, but it's something that is the first step in you getting familiar with the platform and being qualified to take exams or qualified to even take certain courses. Once you logged in, you're going to navigate to the top. So here I have credential program. If you can see my mouse and we're just going to expand that. Once we expand it, we're going to click on program guide. So go ahead and click on that option. And once you reach the ServiceNow credentialing program guide, you're just going to click on start course. On the left side, you'll see this little hamburger icon. It'll expand that list. And once we go down on the left side, you're going to look for understanding exam requirements, mainline and suite certifications. So just go ahead and click on that option. And here it brings you to that section. And we're going to just scroll down until we find the certification that we're looking for. So now we've arrived to the implementation specialist section and it says certified implementation specialists. They are responsible for configuring, implementing, and maintaining a selected ServiceNow solution to meet business requirements. So once all of the contracts have been signed and the top dogs, the CEO, the CIO have made a decision to purchase something, now we need to implement it. And generally what will happen is your organization may work with a partner to get implementation kicked off. But over time, if the organization is looking at other tools, they may require individuals like yourself to become certified so that you can lead implementation. And they may do a handholding session one more time for you to get familiar with the process. And once you get familiar with the process and you're certified, you should be good to go to lead your own implementations for the areas that you are working in. And if I count it correctly, I think there are about 17 total implementation specialist certifications. So IT is where I'm focusing on now, but they also have one for HR and they have some for customer service as well. So if we go down to the IT area, we're going to look for IT service management. And this is where we're going to spend a majority of this video looking at all the different sections of this part of the program guide. So what does it really mean to be a certified implementation specialist? for IT service management. Essentially, you are the person who has the skills and knowledge to be part of the implementation process. And in a lot of ways, lead it. You'll spend time with the executives to align whatever their business goals are for the organization to this project and vice versa. And then you'll work to gather the resources together. And then the people, the people that are gonna help you with this implementation, the people they need to understand, why am I giving you this secure information? And how secure is service now going to handle this? Why do you need this list from me? And what are you going to do with it? When are we going to get trained? All these things are going to come into play. And this certification is going to help you deal with all of that. All right. So we talked about this already a little bit in a previous video, but there are some training requirements and the training requirements really break out into sections. You have welcome to service now. You have certifications that you can go after as well as learning uh, paths. And then you have the ServiceNow platform implementation, CMDB fundamentals. And then beyond that, you have more narrowly focused types of courses. And these courses are the fundamentals of ITSM and the implementation process for this product. So those are the scoped learning environments. And then these are the prerequisites you need in order to identify the tables, identify the lists, know how to configure certain things, et cetera, et cetera. And moving down the list, there is an exam blueprint. The exam blueprint covers a lot of what we're seeing here, but it does have some additional information, which we'll look at a little bit more closely. You have the recommended experience. So ServiceNow recommends that you have six months of general ServiceNow platform experience. This can be as an end user. This can be as a system administrator. I personally think Doing the role of system administrator is going to help you understand a lot more. So consider that six months in that position. And then also six months of ServiceNow implementation experience. And generally, if you are new to the platform, your company just deemed you as the administrator for the platform, you're going to have both of these. You'll be working with a partner to implement and you'll be working with that same partner 
doing knowledge transfers, understanding what are the best practices in terms of administrating the platform. Then lastly, it says general familiarity with industry terminology, acronyms, and initialisms. I need to really know what this word means. That'll be my homework. But basically like terminology, when you talk about what's problem management or what's a configuration item, these are to know amongst other things. And so when you are going through the process of learning anything you don't understand, look it up, make sure you have a good understanding of it, because this is going to be the common tongue you're speaking when you're working with partners, when you're working with service now, when you're working with project team members. And same thing goes for acronyms, which we talked about like CMDB, ITIL, CSDM. You're going to hear a lot about these different acronyms. There's also a spot about the exam registration details. There is a price tag that comes with getting a voucher to take this exam. So be aware of that. Registration is probably a video unto itself, but when you get here, look at the information around this. I do recommend that if you're working within an organization, get yourself a separate web assessor account, maybe not tied to your organization. And that way you can always get access to your emails and things like that. Beyond that, they talk about certification expiration. When I first signed up for this course, the version whether the course version was tied to the Tokyo version. And we're long past Tokyo. At the time of this recording, we're in Vancouver. We're in Q1. And by March of this 2024 year, we'll be moving into Washington. Definitely a, a, a bit of a change. However, the main components of the exam don't change too much. There are just enhanced features when you get to like Vancouver and other areas. So that's the certification expiration component. And now let's go ahead and move over to the exam blueprint just so you can see what that has to offer. Okay, so here we are at another area of now learning, and this is the ServiceNow Certified Implementation Specialist IT Service Management Mainline Blueprint. And this was created 30 days ago from the time of this recording. Um, and this is focusing primarily on the Vancouver release. You can pause to read this or read it on your own. But let's get down to the fun stuff that we really care about, which is what is the exam scope? How much of the exam do I need to worry about in terms of areas I'm not familiar with? So these are the different domains. There are six domains for the, this particular certification, and they involve incident management, problem management, change and release management, service portfolio management, service catalog and request management, and then configuration management database. I can tell you from experience that the way this percentage looks is pretty on par. So when you are working in an IT environment, especially if you've worked in the service desk, you know that most of your day is spent answering questions that are really incidents. So it's either someone's reporting an issue and you're troubleshooting it, or someone has a general information request of some sort. And so that generally comes in as a way of an incident. When you get down to change and release management, change and release management is what drives incidents. So generally something has changed in the environment and either it is a good change and people just need to know more about it or the change wasn't maybe communicated clearly enough and now there are issues. And so more tickets are coming in. In addition to that, if it's not a ticket for something that's broken or it's not working, then it's going to be a ticket for a request, right? So people are asking for stuff and they're asking for access, they're asking for hardware, they're asking for software. They're making these requests and they're doing so through a catalog. And then on the back end of that catalog is a request fulfillment process, which you'll be working with different teams to make sure you have a good flow on. From there, problem management. So problem management may occur as a result of change, or if there are just a lot of the same kind of incidents happening and no one can understand why, then the level two, level three teams would kick into action work with the vendor, work with maybe their own proprietary software to find out what is happening. And then once that gets resolved, it may result into change and release management again, because now there's a new version of this application that needs to go out based on fixes that address incident problems. All those incidents get reviewed and resolved as a result of like maybe a parent ticket. And then there may even come a new request that comes out of that. And lastly, CMDB. So CMDB is a small, but very important piece because anything that you track an incident against, anything you track a problem against, anything you track a change against, anything you track a request against, it's all going to 
be stored hopefully in the CMDB. So any server, any application, hardware, all that stuff, any of those assets should be stored in this database. And lastly, you can get an idea of your whole portfolio with visibility into this database. And the service portfolio management will address that as well. So you really need to know this stuff. There is no shortcut. But we also have the exam registration, which again, we saw that in the previous program guide. Talk about the exam structure. So it is 60 questions in total. And they are multiple choice or multiple select. So select one answer or select all that apply. And then here are some sample questions. I am going to be using these to my advantage once I get completed with all of the different types of courses that are available. And we'll go for it that way. But this is really good information to have. Again, this is free. These are just sample questions. All right, so that does it for this video. Hopefully that was good information for you. Again, I'll have the links available in the description of this video if you're watching on YouTube. And yeah, this is the process I'm going through just to ease my way into it. That said, hopefully you are enjoying your study journey. Hopefully you are making the right strides. And like I always say, this thing is hard, but don't be hard on yourself. Just work hard on yourself. My name is Xavier. This is Tech Xavier. And I'll see you in the next episode. Peace. Dear me, three to six months. Watch how I make you proud.